Things started out all roses today before they took a drastic, drastic turn for the worst. Uh, James surprised me with a special Valentine's Day, potentially not on Valentine's Day, potentially on Valentine's Day, Hour of Power podcast. We had a bit of a chat. We were talking about a uh, online viral marketing course that I'd done. We had a bit of a chat. James told a shit story. Then I told a shit story. We're both not going to tell any more stories. They're pretty average. Uh, everything was gone. Everything was gone pretty smooth sailing until about halfway through, we somehow... We somehow stumbled upon communism. We had a we had a good back and forth. Um, I think it was not a bad debate. Obviously, we're both absolute idiots and don't really know what we're talking about. But I think that's important. Sometimes you get you get stuck listening to people that know what they're talking about. You forget how uh, real people think, whether that's right or wrong. We'll jump into it. Uh, buy some jamu. I'll kiss you on the lips and take you Italy. <laughs> that is a classic. Shut your mouth when you're talking to me. Anyway, no time for nonsense. Gotta get down to business. We're gonna get straight to the point. We've got no time for nonsense. No time for messing around. Straight to the point. No time for fluffing about. Just straight to it. Just straight to the point. Just gotta get on with it. Better not be honey with me, bro. Don't you look at me in that tone of voice. Oh, here's Aim. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me to introduce to you, from the depths of our twisted imaginations, the DCE Pirate Radio Podcast. It doesn't make any sense. The Pirate Radio Podcast, my friend. You're such an idiot. Mate, I'm a genius. I don't know about that. I'm going to start today off, like, our power, it's a Valentine's Day special, right? So this one's for the ladies or the guys. Um, that are out there. I don't know. Maybe you're feeling lonely. Maybe, maybe you're not. But I got a little, I got a little old for you. Um. Oh, you're prepared. Oh, shit, yeah. My dear sister. <laughs> shit, yeah. Mate, you're what, like you're always prepared. Mate, I'm a fucking mogul. Like that isn't a f- business mogul. Mate, stop moving stuff around. I'm trying to get myself further away because yeah, you're okay. quite like a mouse. Oh, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm so I wish I could, we should take a photo of how far away. Different, like, yeah. I've got a good, like. Half a meter, probably seven. Ha- half seven. a penis. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I used a different reference. <laughs> That's like 40 of your penis. Yeah, yeah um, I've got a good 30 centimetres at least. And your, your lips are I'm on pretty the much shaft. on this like, oh. <laughs> And yet, anyway, I'm still loud. Hey, 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 shut up, I'm talking. Um, We're I've bringing got, it down. I've got a little, I've got a little, little I've got, I've got a little for Please you. talk deeper from Valentine's Day. Hey, baby. I'm Actually, away. I might, for this just one episode, I might just crank the bass up so the whole thing just sounds like... Yeah, it sounds like a terrible boom, idea. Boom, boom, um, boom. It probably won't. So anyway, I'm you'll, like, you'll enjoy this. You'll enjoy this story. So my sister, for those of you that don't know, uh, runs the AFL shop in Adelaide, the, the local AFL. Who knows? Store. Who knew that? For everyone, no one knew that. Hey, hey, mum might be listening. She knows. No one knew that. She, mum knows. Continue with your very specific story about your sister. No, nah, it's funny. I rang the shop up just before because Sophie had rung me up and she was carrying about something. I rang the shop back and it was one of the people, one of her staff. I answered. I'm like. Um, yes, hello, I'd like to speak to the manager, please. And he's like, uh, 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 yeah, okay, I'll just get it for you. Sophie comes over and, like, answers the phone. She's like, hey, AFL store Adelaide. I'm like, yeah, is, is, are you the manager? And she's like, yeah. And I said, well, I've got a complaint to make. I bought a jersey last week and the numbers are peeling off and it's not good enough. And you could tell she was like, hmm, I feel like I know this voice, but I'm not sure, so I better stay professional in case there's somebody actually complaining. She's like, oh, okay, yeah, no, that, like, what, what, um, like, what Guernsey was it? And I'm like, uh, it was an Adelaide Crows one. And she was like, okay, and what, what number did you get printed on it? I'm like, 69. And then she just pissed herself laughing and she's like, I really hope that you, James. I'm like, yeah, do you want to go for lunch? She's like, nah, I'm poor. I've got mashed potato. Fun story. Wow. Well, if your Valentine's Day was so terrible that you're listening to us instead of being with a living human being, we just took it worse. <laughs> <laughs> what a shit story. I thought it was funny. Yeah, well. Oh, well, fuck you. Normally I trust story. your judgment. I don't know what it is, but that was terrible. Okay, whatever. Fuck you. I, don't know, you, I think we should build it up. It's like, oh, I've got this great story. Right? No, I didn't say it was great. I said I had a 69 on my jacket. Ha, 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 ha. 
Do better. I mean, yeah, just be better, mate. No, do better. Like I, I say it as, as a friend. Do you want to see, does this make me look mad? I looked in my... Yeah, no, the, the, but like before you even finish the <laughs> sentence, yes. I looked in my, I looked in my work bag the other day and I, cause I was looking for my notes and I realised I've just got six or seven different scrunched up pieces of paper that I've just put in different compartments and they're no. all, and then I start to read them back and they're all like, I've got one here that was set how I do the uh, podcast. I've got one here for what I was going to teach at jiu-jitsu. And I've got one here for my viral marketing campaign. They, they're all nonsense. No, no one could ever. That's a good thing about me. If anyone was trying to read my notes, I write in my own cipher. I don't even understand what I'm talking about most of the time. Good one. Don't you look at me in that tone of voice. <laughs> yeah, you shut your mouth when you talk. But I was going to say, I, I did my viral marketing course. Yeah. That. It was actually surprisingly interesting. But I... I had my notes that I wanted to discuss to you at our business meeting, but I yeah. thought, you know what? Let's podcast. just do it on the podcast. Okay, go. Fire. All right. Idea number one. I prefer it if you spoke Spanish. Ideas numeros unos. Thank you. You can switch back to English now because I don't understand any of the other words. Uh, muchas gracias, por favor, for purchasing a figura que tira puraca. Very good, thank you, Paraka. <laughs> Something along those lines. No, idea number one, ah. which I'm, I'm pretty sure we probably already discussed this, but I think when people purchase one of our products online, I want to send them a handwritten note. Already but, doing it. Okay. Well, I want you to write a better handwritten note. Fuck you. That just, just say, thanks for purchasing, share with your friends, please. Yeah. And we can maybe, you know, kicking it old school, Polaroid of a dick pic. Yeah, sure. Maybe don't, maybe scratch that last part. So you're on board with that? Well, I'm already doing it. Okay, well, cool. So that's a good idea for Matt. Do you know what I've been doing, though? Not just a, not just a handwritten note. I've been handwriting the note on a DCE sticker. I was actually going to say do it on a sticker. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but, though, but you have also been like... The only problem is if you buy something online, you might get yourself a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't leave that poor bloke alone. I haven't that, that, spoken to him since I dropped the Oh, he's got, got his pen pal. We're going to better him up. It's Valentine's Day. Hey, mate. I, you let me deal with people, you deal with fucking computers, <laughs> alright? The day that people want to talk to you is the day that I'll listen to your Ones opinion. and zeros, ones yeah, exactly, and zeros. Exactly, does not compute human emotion. Did you ever think, though, just no, for a I second, no, just no, I entertain this for a second. Yeah. If someone yep. is buying something online, yep. they might be the type of person that more likely wants to talk to me, Mr. Computer Man, than deal with Hugs and Kisses James. No. Do you understand the concept of buying things online? Yes. You don't have to talk to people. I understand that. So don't rock up in the house with flowers and balloons. <laughs> I didn't rock up with flowers or balloons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glad I talked to you out of that idea. I'm like, oh, I'll still going to do it. I'm like, I don't think this is going to go at 10 a.m. sober how you thought it was going to go at 11 p.m. drunk. Well, it went perfectly. Because it didn't happen. And Johan and I are very close friends. Best now. friends. Yeah. Do you... um? When you walked together, when you went there, how long before you guys were walking around with your hand inside each other's pockets? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we just docked. Was it back pocket or side pocket? Because side pocket is like prison bitch. Back pocket is like a mutual loving relationship. I think it, it was back pocket. Oh, I like that. I really hope that Johan listens to this and is like, oh, what the fuck are these people talking about? Yeah, have you, have you got <laughs> Jammu <Jamu back? laughs> Jammu back? I, I was okay with the guy being overly friendly, but now you're talking about me on a podcast. Hey. Yeah, see what I did there? Just flipped it right around on its goddamn head. Speaking of nothing to do with what, of what, um, I've what got, I've got a list. Oh, right. That's alright, we can, we can jump all over the place. Yeah, no, that's what <laughs> we do. Um, I met the guy, actually completely irrelevant, from the first, the coffee place. Cool dude. Has a show, radio show on Fresh. You met a dude that has a free radio show and works in a coffee store. Owns First Things First Coffee. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Oh, I tagged him in something the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, sweet. If anyone like is local and lives, especially any of you northerners, um, there's a drive-by. Drive-by? No, no. it's on Main North Road. It's almost in the city. Mm. You say things like that and it's like... It's it, north. It's like, oh, that person it's lives in... It's on Main North what's Road. A, what's a generic... Southern suburb that's pretty close to the city. Edwardstown. Yeah, okay. Whenever you talk about the north, it's like me saying Edwardstown is Christie's Beach. And we've just confused the shit out of everyone that's not from Adelaide. Ah, well, they'll work out. But get, anyway, get, you, get, Google, get Google Maps. Long, long story short, you sound foolish. <laughs> and as a friend, 
I'm trying to help you. I, Let I, me help. I, I don't think help. you are. I don't think you are. I, 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 help me help you. Help, help me, me help you. Help you. But yeah, if you want to go through, there's a drive through coffee shop called First Things First Coffee. Makes sense. We're an international... Yeah, so I've got local roots, mate. Just keep that down. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's a special day. I've got holes. Idea number two that I got. Yes. Which is good. Uh, you know, they're talking You're about... telling me the idea is good before you told me the idea. No, it is good because we're already kind of implementing half these things. Ah, okay. So basically, okay. So this dude was telling a story about, I don't know, it sounded like it was famous. But hey man, let's keep doing a heap of these things we're already doing. Well, okay. Is that wrong? No. Is it wrong, is it wrong to fucking think about yourself? <laughs> is, is, to it wrong? is it wrong to picture yourself with a vagina? <laughs> 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 yes, Jerry, it is. <laughs> Why? I don't know. It's Rick and Morty, right? Compassion. Compassion. So, um, he was telling this story. It's about mm-hmm. some hot dog joint. I don't know. It sounded like it was famous. Never fucking heard of it. So, they might, hey, on the down low, marketing can't be that fucking good because I've never heard of it. So, yo, so you've never heard of it, so it's not good. No, because the story is still a cool story. Okay. So, they're saying there's this random hot dog, hot dog time machine, hot dog joint. In, that's, Wait, so, they, so a hot dog joint or hot dog time machine, which is a completely different thing. Hot dog. I just got befuddled. Okay, carry on. So some hot dog joint in New York. Unique New York. You're in there having a hot dog. Yeah. And for some reason in the corner, it's like a phone booth. Like an old-fashioned phone booth. Like Superman phone booth. Yeah, like Doctor Who. Yeah. And if you go into the phone booth... And you, there's no, there's nothing in there you put except for a phone. <laughs> Whoa, crazy. Crazy time, but old school one. If you spin it, it, a, a voice answers and goes, hello, do you have a reservation? And you're like, no. Um, but if you do have a reservation. Yeah. A door opens and there's a secret bar in there. Apparently this bar packs out. If you don't have, like, it opens at 3 o'clock every day, that phone line opens. Uh, yeah. Uh, assumably, you can call that number from anywhere. Presumably, yeah. Assumably. Okay. Cool. Presumably. No, wrong words. Uh, words. Words is just a mechanism, man, as long as you know what I'm talking about. Semantics. Don't let the fucking system, man, tell, it, tell man. you how to use your words, man. Yeah, don't get me started. I'm communicating podcast. with the people, man. That, that Joe Rogan podcast yesterday was good, man. Free brain. Talking about the more. It didn't blow my brain, but it just made a lot of sense. Hmm. It's like, hey, if your kid doesn't do well in school, in class, because he wants to go and go fishing, but, hey, fucking let him go fishing. Focus. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, ride the wave, ride hey. the wave, man. So, yeah, we, um, basically it's this... From 3 o'clock, the phone line opens every yeah, day. Cool. And by 3.30, they're packed every day. Packed. Out. No advertising, no sign, no nothing. It's all by word of mouth. Cool. Which I link back to, uh, do you jamu, cryptic, annoying question. I like it. So what I want to do... I was going to say, is there a point? Coming yeah. To I want to speak to Sticker Man. Yeah, I'm I want, I want to get a do you jamu, and then in small writing... Um, for more information, check out our website, and I yeah. have a website, and I want to stick that on the back of my car. Okay. Can you organise that for me? So you want to speak to Sticker Man? Well, I don't. You're the Sticker Man, man. Yeah, right. Okay, I see how it is. Yeah. I don't know what I'm doing, but can I organise it for you? I get it. I didn't say you don't know what you're doing, mate. Stickers you and fucking licking windows. Anyway, you're the man I come see. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> All right. Next idea. Actually, no. Let's talk about something. I'm bored of your ideas. Okay. Damn it, but I've got nothing to go on with. Back Next to my that's <laughs> idea. Oh, this is all just concept stuff we're already doing. I just like to re- reinforce it. People like to feel special. People like to feel included. And I think we just do that every day. So moving on. You think we should do that? No, we think we, we do, do, do that. I think we're good people. Do do. Especially me. <laughs> do do. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other one is on the website somewhere. I'm not married to this idea. But you know how like McDonald's used to have like a sign that said one million served? Uh, I know that um, Zambreros have a thing that ticks over. Yeah. Sure. I'd like to put that on for Jamu sold on the website. Just for shits and gigs. Okay. Cool. There's more stuff in here, but... <clears throat> top secret. I'm bored. Top secret. Top, top I'm bored secret. with my own ideas. Yeah, that, you know what? That makes two of us. Oh, perfect. Oh, no, I'm kidding. What sort of milk have you got in that coffee? Coconut milk. Is it really? Yeah. So excited. Oh, it's just like being in Bali again. Because Bali, little in fact, Bali is actually the only place in the world you can get coconut milk. We're in Bali right now. 
That did is, you know that? I blew your mind, didn't that I? Is a fallacy. No, we could be anywhere in spirit. No, we're in Bali because I have actually invented a teleport machine. A teleport machine. A I get, You're doing well today. I've been hit in the head. Alpha I've been hit in the head way too many times. My words just aren't working anymore. Are you taking alpha brain still? Yeah, but I ain't today because I have it at work. You're an intriguing man. We have different routines, and I'm accepting of that. Yeah, okay. That was, that wasn't a mean thing to say, but it was said with a mean tone. Oh, right? there's no, no mean tone, no, no mean tone at all. I don't understand why you take all this stuff to work. I, well, because, uh, from someone who actually has to go to work every day. Oh, but even when I went to work, I didn't, like, all of my, like, that's my morning ritual before I go. Yeah, I don't, I'm not a, um, OCD, actually I am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Eat stuff on the I'm not. I just like to do it at work. Because I forget if it's in the morning. I get up, I'm lucky if I get my pants on, and I go to work. Yeah. My routine consists of... How am I the single one and you're the married one? <laughs> I put my pants on every uh, damn morning. I can tell you exactly why I'm the married <laughs> one. Because people are shallow, and I'm very attractive. <laughs> <laughs> that, you just insulted your wife, well done. Why is that insulting? You said she was shallow. Everyone's shallow. And she only liked you for your looks. There's not much. I haven't got much else going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Valentine's Day special. <laughs> Valentine's Day My wife hates me. Oh, I got twitchy eye again. I don't know what's going on. Mine did that the other day too. I think it's tired. Can you it? see it? Is it going now? It just stopped. It no. just stopped. For those of you listening at home that can't see what I'm talking about, my right eye, like my bottom eyelid, is just twitching like a motherfucker. I'd say it's probably because we're go, 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 mate. Well, we've been, like, you think about the last at least four weeks. Five weeks. I reckon, I've, I reckon I've made Jammu every week for the last five weeks. Welcome to the fucking club, mate. Oh, I like it so much better when you do the manual labor. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprised. That's the beautiful thing about being the computer guy. I can do whatever the fuck I want. It's beautiful. Yeah, I actually, yeah, it, it dawned on me the other day. I was like, shit, this is like five weeks in a row now. Someone said to me, like, I, yesterday, I was because I was at work work till, yeah. like, Quarter past eight last night. Yeah. Then I went and saw Todd because he wanted to go through fucking shipping container home conversion ideas. And I, well, I do like shipping container homes. I can't talk any louder, man. Like, I can't talk any louder without yelling. No, for some reason, you just, you just... I don't understand You fizzle, it. mate. You fizzle. I don't understand it. Anyway, so... You're mumbling, that's why. I mean, I mean this with all due respect. Unique New there York. There you go, look at that. Beautiful. I went Good to job. Todd's to talk about shipping container homes. You know what I think it is? I think shipping and tailor homes is fucking boring and it just zaps the life out of you. They're pretty cool. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, just, the music man would beg oh, to differ. Oh, fuck off. I'm trying to finish my sentence. <laughs> and I sat down and I was like, man, I'm tired. And he's like, why? Like, what have you been doing? And then I realized, I'm like, shit, it is. It's like five weeks and then every weekend I've been doing stuff both days. So it's just got to that point where I'm like, fuck, how did tight? Like, I don't know how people do this every day. I'm alright actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm still try. I'm still training six days a week. You know what? You know what helps? Not drinking. Because I, I think that's why I'm okay because I haven't really been drinking. Yeah, my sleep. I just need to. Sleep. My sleep patterns far. Yeah. Well, the problem is drinking as well. It's like Sunday is my rest day, and if you spend it all day hungover, it's not really a rest day. I don't get hangovers. I am impervious to hangovers. Okay. Yeah. Just in case anyone wondered. Mm. Don't know if it's a good or a bad thing. Liver probably isn't he's happy with me, yeah. but you know. It's working. My liver, that is. I'm going to go to my ideas journal. Okay. Do you know what I... Oh, did I tell you a story happened the other day? No, I didn't. Because <laughs> I was there and you weren't there. <laughs> vague, vague question statement, but no. So I went and got some lunch, as I want to do around lunchtime. Makes sense, yeah. And I went and sat in a food court, because it was hot outside. Sat down, eating away... Someone, I'm sure people come, someone comes up to me and like, oh, just for next time, this is reserved for people that buy things from this food court. I'm like looking around, I'm like, well, A, there's like a thousand seats. Yeah, okay. And it was like, obviously the person was like super awkward about doing it because, hey, Jesus Christ, man. Oh, shut up. Anyway, it's obviously the person was like, awkward about it, because it's, like it's an annoying thing to have to do in a weird situation. So she, then she starts trying to justify it. She's like, oh, you know, if people, if people buy stuff from here and they can't find a seat, um, that's not oh, really... Yeah, okay, that's where not, are we going? That's not really... I'm telling you a fucking oh, story, mate. Like, with the lady, like, yeah, okay, oh, where are we going? Oh, that's right. Jesus, you're such a fucking beanie bonnet today. Trying to keep a happy podcast, and you just... 
I'm grouchy. I'm Is it happy. because it's Valentine's Day? I'm happy. Are you? Yeah. Are you? Yeah, I'm Do you need good. a hug? No. I'm your friend, and you feel very grouchy, and I feel like you need a hug. No, I'm just busy, man. I'm a busy man. I'm on the go. I've got a lot of shit to do. I can't just be swanning around here with my pants off like you. Anyway, long story short, I just, I just looked, I did your trick. <laughs> the irony is I'm not wearing pants and that is. I channeled, uh, I channeled Amanda James and I just didn't say a word. I just kind of stared at her like I was a little bit slow. <laughs> 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 and she just kept talking and kept talking and it was getting awkwarder and awkwarder and awkwarder. Um, and then I happened to look down and on her breast she has a customer service manager. And I was thinking to myself, Mike, <laughs> you're not a customer service manager, you're a fucking cleaner. Nothing wrong with being a cleaner, but let's not put on airs here. I don't know, I thought it was, I thought it was an interesting thing. I'm like, what Remember are you doing? earlier today when I was telling a story and you <laughs> said that it was terrible because I'd built it up too much? We've got two terrible stories. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, right back at you, buddy. Ooh. Hurtful. On, no, on no, 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 no. I'm just being honest because I'm your friend and I care about you. No, nah, you're in a mood today. I'm really not. I'm, actually, I'm in a good mood. Maybe that's what My it is. My morning meetings. Maybe that's what's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Meetings got cancelled. It was great. Had a good day. Um, something that I can't remember, but we need to remember, is we agreed to do something on the last podcast. At the very beginning of the last podcast. And I remember listening to it the other day thinking like, oh, I should add that to the um, project schedule because we need to talk about that. Damn, if I can remember what it is. Wasn't the Jammu winner? No, but we do need to do that too. Have we picked a Jammu winner yet? No, I've got to download this app on my phone. Ah, uh, to get the random, random the, the random gen The random generator. Yeah. Um, so in the meantime, keep liking and sharing. No one's going to, it's, you know, Has anyone liked or shared? Of course people have liked and shared. Mum and 42 other people. You're very negative on the internet. Didn't I help you with your internet? I thought 42 was good. Uh, 142. One million (laughs) dollars. You're literally like, was Austin, you're the Dr. Evil of the internet. Billion dollars? I got six followers. (laughs) Hey man, we're killing it with the bike hire thing. You smashed it for me. I liked all your, ta- your tags today. You obviously put in like bikes, but it picked up motorbikes. It was like road bike, Moto GP, Yamaha, like Harley something. Or I'm like, that's not the kind of bikes that I need hashtags for. Too late. Like my bike. Yeah, <laughs> made, made me laugh. You're going to have a couple of uh, big boys with big beards on your bike. I feel like when they're not really our target market, I feel like they wouldn't want to come and hire a pretty pastel coloured vintage bike. Well that's where you're gonna lose a lot of business by making assumptions like that. Hey, everyone's welcome, but I just I just can't see uh burly bikey blokes burly bikey boys uh wanting to do that. Burly bikey boys have missuses too. They do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Uh, yeah, okay. Maybe I'll stand corrected. I'll do a little poll for you. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> <laughs> a little pole dance. Oh, did I tell you I um I I fired off a nonsense email to another podcast and declared them our mortal enemies. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. I sent I sent a um I sent an email that was well it was it's basically how I talk to you is it it sounds like I'm saying mean things but I mean it with all love and affection. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're learning. You're figuring, you're helping out with this give and take. Uh, <laughs> uh, two hour debriefs after every podcast are, are paying off. You're speaking louder and you're giving me a bit of back and take. Back and take? Back and forth. <laughs> you need to take more drug. <laughs> <laughs> Said no doctor ever. FDA approved. Oh, I'll tell you what I was going to do the other day. Update my dirty doctor response to one Ryan Top. Well, that's not how it works. I can do what I want. I'm going to tag Ryan in this one we share it. Sure, but you can't change the past. Played Peter Panner the other day. Okay. Put 10 bucks in. Yeah. Got spins. Yeah. Picked Peter Panner because, duh, Peter Panner's man. You never pick Peter Panner. No, you always pick Peter Panner. You never pick Peter Panner. Always that's pick... Psychology 101. If you're designing the game, Peter Panner is the main one that everyone's going to pick. So if you're designing the game, you don't want to make Peter Panner pay out. <laughs> say that three times. Peter Panner pay out. Peter Panner pay out. Peter Panner pay out. That I can say. Yeah. <laughs> Go figure. Normal <laughs> words? Nope. 
Nope. Nope. Anyway, so got games on games, but it would that Peter Pan wasn't there. So I had to pick the professor. No, you what picked the, the dog. No, Fondo wasn't there either. Then you picked the floozy. Nah, she has diseases. I don't care, as long as she's got money. Nah, she doesn't. Anyway, I got the professor, I got 80 bucks, I was very happy. I could eat all week this week. So gamble, kids. Yeah, gamble. Gamble all your money. Bitch better have my money. So, yeah, so you listen to that uh, Joe Rogan podcast. I yeah, with you. Jonah Hari. Yeah. Very, oh, very oh. interesting. Yeah, Joe Rogan had his uh, grumpy pants on. And I'm like, uh, yeah, to a degree. Like, he was being very sick. Like, he was shutting down all I the I feel time. like he was in a bad mood. It was like... Because I thought that like what that guy was saying, a lot of that stuff was like, oh, yeah, that's pretty reasonable. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. You had some dude on the other week saying the earth is flat, and you gave him a lot more fucking slack than you gave this dude that's done science. Yeah, no, but he it's he hasn't done science. He's, he's done a lot of research. He's interviewed people. Yeah. Oh, I can tell what the issue was, is Joe Reagan's personal philosophy is all about personal accountability, and you can you can change your own future, and, like, if you work hard, and this guy's trying to say that there are... Um, fundamental issues with the way society currently works that's resulting in a lot of people having more anxiety and more depression etc etc yeah but they were still a group like to be fair they were still on the same page um but johan was well he was saying like we're treating the symptoms not the cause so okay you got depression there's a chemical imbalance in your brain take this chemical and it'll sort you that, it'll sort that, that works 60 percent of the time 40% of the time. Yeah, and it'll sort you right out, probably. And we know it And we know it stops working after a while, so then we've got a lucky dip year again. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, it was it was tricky. Same with all the stuff he was talking about addiction, how, like, the mum was a cocaine addict, and the, or his, I think it was his cousin was a cocaine addict, and her kid was on Ritalin or Adderall or whatever, one of, one of those attention mm. deficit drugs. Um and how, like, we as a society, it's like, oh, the mum's a drug addict, but yeah, the, kid, exactly, the kid's being fed the same compound. effectively the same fucking drug. Yeah. And it's mandated by the school. Yeah. It's like, you can't come to school unless you take this drug. It's like, how fucking backwards is that? Yeah, it's people trying their best. I, I try not to throw the baby out of the bathwater with a lot of that medicine stuff, because generally it is, it come, to me it comes back to that idea that there's people that follow the rules, and there's people that are not rule followers, and you need both. Yeah. And like they generally start like they loosely attribute themselves as to the people that follow the rules are generally conservative. Um, they believe in keep doing what's doing and you need those people so that shit doesn't fall off the rails. Yeah. Effectively, like we need one of them around here somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But on the other side, you don't get any new ideas, you don't get any creativity. No. Um so it's, I try not to throw because I tend to go down the old, yeah, fuck it, let's sell it all out and try something new. I try to balance that purposely, because there's obviously there are a lot of great things with with modern medicine, I think the problem is it's like all things, is you're just going off the momentum of what people said before, who were doing the best in the situation that they could do before. Yeah. Uh, and then you chuck in, you know, pharmaceutical companies and laziness and, um, you know, long-term uh, hierarchies and how education departments work. Oh, and based on don't get me started on that. I really liked what he was talking about with the, like, um, democratic business model. Um, yeah, but also, fuck off, hippie. That ain't going to work. Why? Because it's not, there's a reason that humanity, regardless of whether you have very left-wing politics or right-wing politics, usually ends up with one person in charge. It's, it's how our nature is defined. No, it's not. That's what he's saying, though. But it's not what he's saying. He was saying that that was happier in that situation. I guarantee you that that business will go off the rails. It's a guarantee. Now, how can you make that guarantee? Okay. That's bullshit. Because that is bullshit. Because you're just saying things now because you have a tendency to live in the woo-woo. In the woo-woo? In the woo You're a woo-woo Where's boy. Where's the woo-woo? You're a basic boy. We've gone over this before. Okay. Where's the woo-woo? So, human... One, sorry, we've got two close neighbours. We've got chimpanzees. Yep. And we've got bonobos. Yep. Bonobos... Are just going back to the fucking... There's a whole other story. The one book you half read four years ago. No. There's a lot of science... Relating the chip, like the commonly associated one is the chimpanzees are our closest neighbor. They share like 99 point something percent DNA with yes. us. And their social structures very commonly attribute to ours. 
They have a hierarchical structure where someone is in charge. And I'm not saying that humans wouldn't be happier if we adopted this everybody's equal, everybody's happy philosophy. I'm just saying that in reality and in practice, it very, very rarely works out very well. Yeah, but that's what he was saying. Because because we've created this social, like we've constructed social boundaries that that say that that's how we're supposed to do it. And we're actually... Well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's not a socially created boundary. I'm saying it's part of our um, biology. I'm not necessarily convinced it is. Look into lobsters. <laughs> lobsters? Lobsters organise themselves into <laughs> similar... I've got this hierarchical... like mental image of like this army of lobsters. Like, my... yeah. Anyway. Get him. He doesn't agree with me. Yeah. Apparently, lobsters organise themselves into very similar hierarchical structures. As humans yeah. do, they have someone at the top and someone down the bottom. And they have a... I think they, they share, on the most basic level with us, they share a similar... Um, What's the thing to exhaust if you do uh, low reps, high high power? Nervous system. So like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's how my brain works. <laughs> I was like, lactic acid? I yeah. don't know. So um, yeah, that, I think three million or three billion years ago, the lobsters branched off from us, if you believe in evolution and the devil. <laughs> and yet they do share that. <laughs> that, they, that con- contradicts I'm, I'm butchering. It's like, actually do some research. But yeah. the general gist of it is I think that um, there's something in our DNA that organises us into that following one leader type situation. I think, I think that it's a social construct and it's what we've been taught to believe. Then why do chimpanzees do it? Why do dolphins not do it? And we share ninety something percent of our DNA with dolphins, and they're fish. I'd Google that. I would really fucking Google that. Yeah. We share ninety percent of our DNA with ninety with something. Ninety something. Okay. Well, you keep talking for a sec. Okay. You Google. But we, uh. They're mammals anyway, they're not fish. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's you keep talking why It's all the same. Um, they organise themselves and work together as a team, and look how successful they are. Uh, dolphins kill for fun and rape. <laughs> they have sex for pleasure. What are you Googling? How, how, how much DNA we share? How much DNA we share with dolphins? Here we go, folks. I'll make a drum roll noise. Oh, I hate the internet when it doesn't just answer my question. That's going to be annoying. Don't do that. You do, it's okay for you to do it on the last podcast. Yeah, I'm better than you. No, your attitude today stinks. It's... Oh, I can't think of the word. Damn it, now I can't think of words. You've infected me with your brain <laughs> slowness. Um, Where was I going with that thought? Yeah, no, I think it's a social construct. I think it's just like like our education. Apparently, apparently we have 50% the same dinner with bananas. <laughs> um, <laughs> fuck. I'm going to have to be close with dolphins, aren't I, then, if we've got 50% of the DNA, same dinner. I think you actually banana. find that a banana is much more similar to me than a dolphin. <laughs> Bland, but full of nutrition. I feel like if that was true, it would be coming up. Okay, anyway. I feel like, yeah, one of the things that I really like that we spoke, we've spoken about before is how, like, our education system, for example, prepares people to be factory workers, prepares people to be robots. Basically, it's like you come in, you check in at this time, you sit and you do as you're told till the bell goes. Um, then you go and have your smoke, you have your break, you come back, you sit and you do as you're told till the bell goes. And that, like, that's, that was what we were constructing. Um, but people don't work that way. If a kid doesn't learn the same way as everyone else before, like, you know, you'd get punished. Now, thank God they've sort of worked it out and educators are working with, diff- like, you know, they work with differentiation and teaching the different kids to, like, with different learning styles. Uh, but yeah, I'm definitely getting bored of talking to myself. So can you just concede the point that we share 90% of our DNA? <laughs> no, because it's, I feel like it's wrong. It sounds wrong. And I couldn't immediately find the answer to it. I feel like if that was the truth, it would, uh, it would pop up pretty quickly. But then dolphins are mammals. So like we, sh- we didn't deviate that long ago on the evolutionary tree, but 90% sounds too high. I can't prove, I can't prove you wrong. It just sounds wrong and you can't prove it right. 
humans and dolphins. So we found that the dolphin genome and the human genome basically are the same. It's just there's a few chromosome, chromosomal rearrangements that have changed the way the genetic material is put together. Yeah, but that's different because you don't understand biology. You're just saying, you're reading things in a science voice, but you're not quite sure what those words mean. Doesn't matter, it's still supporting my yeah. argument. Is it? Does it say 90%? <laughs> you keep talking. How many chromosomes do dolphins have? Two. It sounds like they have different chromosome number to humans. Anyway, this is boring. Let's move on. Okay. Let's, ag- let's agree to disagree, but you're probably wrong. No, but I'm probably right. Okay, sure, you're probably right. Who cares? What okay. was your point? Uh, that they should, that, that. Because dolphins do organise themselves into hierarchies as that, well. It's anyway. not a hierarchy, they work as a pack, they work as a team. Yeah, with one person in charge. No, like, not with one person. What about in wolves? What about wolves? They work in a team. Yeah. And they have an alpha <laughs> wolf. Similar to dolphins. Do you know they call Killer Whale the wolves of the sea? <laughs> I watched a documentary. I feel like you're just clutching at straws now because you think that I, you've realised that, ah, fuck, James might actually. No, you're oversimplifying things with, and and what you're saying doesn't even make sense. Hey. So you're saying that in dolphin society, they're purely, everyone's equal. How come there's rape then? If everyone's equal, then how come a higher percentage of. It's not rape when it's dolphins. Okay. Jesus, mate. (laughs) You're gonna listen to yourself for 20 years. This doesn't gonna sound good. <laughs> uh, so that explains, so you're, so, okay, let's assume. Yeah. That dolphins live in a purely no hierarchical structure, which I disagree with, but okay. just for the sake of your argument, what's your point? I can't even remember what we're arguing now. You were oh, trying, no, because I agree. You were trying to say you were that. You saying that we have to have a hierarchy system. Someone has to be I didn't, in charge. No, I did not say we have yeah, to. Okay, I said okay, you're saying our closest neighbours, which are chimpanzees. No, I'm saying that's hardwired into our DNA. I so it's not something you can just is. wish away with thoughts and prayers. It's something that is hardwired into our DNA. I so if we want to move on to something else, we have to actively understand that's part of us and choose to do something different. I don't think it's hardwired into our DNA. Okay, well, congratulations. Let's see your studies. Okay, uh, alright, I'll go away and do some stuff. Alright, I'll see you in t- you come back here in ten years. No, fuck that, I'll be back next week. Okay. Well, well it'll be yeah, a terrible I'll, study. No, I'll go onto Google, I'll find some other researchers, oh, okay. I'll find Wikipedia. I'll, I'll find reference points. Okay. Wikipedia's okay now. Okay. It's not like two thousand and four when you okay. couldn't really trust it. Okay, man. Okay, so we disagree. Like, I'm not saying I'm right. I just from, uh, the, from the research I have skim read, <laughs> I personally believe that there's something to the hierarchical structure being hardwired into our DNA. I feel like I'm not going to go away and research it, but I'm going to mm. say that I'm going to. Yeah, I know you. That sounds like you. Hey, fuck you. But that's the problem with that, and that's my personal problem with the ideas that you try to spread sometimes, is you're a little bit wishy-washy. And, like, it's all well and good to say we should all love each other and we should all work together. We should. And we should all that. Yeah, but we've tried that with communism. Look how that fucking ended up. No. Because what ends up happening is that if we're all working together and we all get paid the same amount, then I'm like, you know what? I'm going to have a fucking sickie today. Fuck it. It's not coming in. And then the work doesn't get done. Then we all suffer, we all starve, we all die. No, that's... No, okay. Well, let's move on. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Because I now, I don't know whether I want to go and live in a field in a shipping container with you anymore. It works on a small scale. Yeah, small scale. In a tribe type situation. Yeah. yeah. That, which is exactly what they were talking about yesterday. Okay. We'll see. I just have my doubts about that. I think it will go wrong. Okay. Pessimist. I've just seen it play out before. <laughs> Listen to it. You've done a back in Nam. I can, I can tell why you might not associate with this because I have a feeling who you'd be in this scenario. But did you ever do a group project in school? Probably. I imagine so. What's, what's the breakdown? Say there's six people in the group. Yeah. What's the breakdown of percentage work done in that group? What do you mean? So there's six people in the group. Yeah. You've got to do a group project for school. Depends what sort of project it is. Okay. So you think everyone equally does work? Let's say four, because that's easier for me to do the quick maths. Quick maths. So you reckon all those four... Everyone does 25%. Yeah, you reckon that's how it normally plays out? It depends on what it is, man. Do you think it's ever played out where people equally do 25% of the group project? Of of one one project? No. Okay. So you agree with me, then. But in a football team, 
Does there everyone do? Does everyone do? Yeah. Exactly? Th- okay. Does everyone do equal work in a football team? No. So there's no best and fairest. There's no point for someone playing better than no, someone else. No, but every, like that's the thing though. You're all constantly work. Like you create an environment where you want to help each other because it's a small. So football players all get paid the same in the AFL. They pay everyone. What? No. Okay, so they pay the better players more. They play. So there's like some kind of hierarchy. No, not there. necessarily. So it's like have a captain, they have a coach that tells you what to do. It's almost like they're using a hierarchy and positive reinforcement for the people that do better. No, they're all working together. Are they? Yes. So you're saying if you paid, I don't know football, if you paid the best player yeah. the same as you pay the worst player, that they would still try as hard. Yes. I would say you're living in you, a fucking dream world. So you world. think that the the best player is trying harder than the worst player? I think they're trying, I'm not saying that they're trying harder, I'm saying if you stopped giving them things, they wouldn't try. What, who? What do you mean? Why? Because you need incentive and reward. Why would you do it? Winning. Okay. Because everyone wants to have a good time and have fun. Yeah. At your your local B grade where no one's getting any money, some of that stuff might work. At the AFL level, they got like they've devoted a huge amount of their life to doing it. You wouldn't do that if you fucking hated it, would you? So they'd do it if they didn't get paid. Yeah, I reckon they would. And the same, so, that, so you're saying they'd still play football. And this is and this is where I disagree with you fundamentally. I can't prove it, but I would be fucking shocked if you got the entire roster of the AFL currently as yeah, it is, yeah. and you stopped paying them if fifty percent of them were still playing. I reckon 90% of them would still play football in some capacity. Some capacity on the weekend where you don't have to train, you don't have to try. Well, you still have to train <laughs> and you still have to try. So they wouldn't be as good. Well, it, it wouldn't be a job. They'd have to do something else. Like, they're doing something. So they wouldn't be as good at it. What do you mean? So if your goal was to try and make the best football team possible. Yeah. If you stop paying them or pay them all equally, yeah. you'd have a shitter team. No. You wouldn't. Not necessarily. So they wouldn't have to get... Everyone... That's like universal minimum wage, though. So they wouldn't have to get a job. What do you What do you mean? Where are you uh, going so with this? I'm saying, if you have to get a day job and work nine to five... Right. You're probably going to be worse at football. Than if you were paid to train all the time. Yeah. Yeah, like anything. So if you stop paying people and just did it for fun, you're going to have a worse product. Yeah. But if you paid all of them the same, like a universal wage, yeah. not based on skill, yeah, based well, based on skill, but not, yeah, not a fluctuating, then then Wait, so it's based on skill, or everyone gets paid the same. I'm confused. So everyone who plays football gets paid the same amount of money. Everyone that plays in the AFL got paid the same amount of money. Yeah, you'd st- like you'd still have the same product. No, you would not. I fundamentally disagree. If with people that. were still, if you if you didn't have to work a day job. And yeah. it's the thing you Let's just say everyone in the AFL get pays 100 grand a year. A good way. Yeah. I reckon, play, I reckon right? you'd yeah. have an inferior product. What it, why? Because incentive. It's the way people work. It's the same reason that communism keeps falling over. And that's just on a micro scale. Why? Why would... Why? I don't understand. If someone said... Human psychology. Do, if someone said to you, hey man, you can just like train BJJ and we'll give you 100 grand a year to just like train BJJ and like keep getting better at it and it was your passion would you not do it and do you not think you'd improve yeah but I wouldn't have, I wouldn't improve at the same rate if someone said hey mate you're the you're the best in the world here's five million dollars for you to dedicate to it why I don't I don't know how to explain to you this it just doesn't work I just that's my personal belief I might be wrong I just think that I I yeah, fundamentally believe that, that if you implemented a hundred thousand dollars, everyone in the AFL gets paid that. I think that you would see so then the you don't skill think, level go down. So then you don't think a universal minimum wage is a good idea. I think that's a different thing. Why? Because a universal minimum, uh, a universal minimum income, or whatever they call it, yeah. isn't everything. What do you mean it isn't everything? It's just enough to live. So there's still an incentive for you to go out and earn. So so you can't not earn on top. It's like you get. You get a guaranteed... No, but you'd go and do what you're passionate about. Yeah. And I might make lots of money, or I might make not much money. There's still an incentive in it. So if you... Let's say we go in universal basic income. Let's say it's $30,000 a year. Yeah. I don't want to live off $30,000 a year. No. I could if I had to. I'd live in a shit house and I'd have enough food. So worst case scenario, I know I've got a safety net so I can go and pursue my dreams for whatever I want. Yeah. There's still an incentive <clears throat> for me to go out and become a surgeon... 
and earn $250,000 a year versus me going out and becoming a call center operative and getting $50,000 a year. There's still incentive involved in that. All, yeah. all universal basic income does is give you a safety net in case worst case scenario. That's very different from going everyone gets paid $100,000 regardless. To be a football player. To be anything. I just exa- if you exasperate it. <laughs> exasperate it. Extrapolate it. That's the word. Hell. Yeah, if you paid everyone a hundred thousand dollars, like I'm just using, I was using the AFL as a microchasm. I don't know why. All right, let me frame it this way: Do you think everyone in current pace for the AFL tries the hardest? Tries their hardest. Yeah. Yeah. You think so? Well, I would hope so. So everyone would have their like on and off days, but I think it. Yeah. I so you like think that every? Okay. Do you think everyone that goes to your football team puts in the same amount of effort? No. There you go. But I'm an amateur club. So you think everyone in the AFL tries that? So the example of, um, you know, the old Michael Jordan analogies when they're like, oh, every day after training, he used to practice for another two hours doing layups and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. There's certain people that just try harder. Yeah. Because they're driven to be the best. Yeah. He wasn't doing that for more money. He was doing it because he wanted to be the best. You don't think that he gets paid well, some I'm money? I'm sure he, that was a, that, that happened Do as well. Do you don't think that he might have applied that drive and passion to something else if you didn't make Five hundred million dollars from playing basketball. He went and played golf for a while. Yeah, but he he got dropped like that. That was his, that was his you know his a personality trait of his. I don't like. There's there's people at footy who don't play A grade that stay behind after training every week and kick goals for half an hour and do stuff. They're not getting paid. They're doing it because they want to improve. Yeah, there's some that's people. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some, some people. people, but I, I, my, the majority of people are not that way. There's, there's some, some people, people that'll just do it anyway. There's some people are lazy. But then, if you're working and everyone's doing the good jobs and everyone's doing the shitty jobs, that's why, like, you need to have that open and honest communication between people. I just don't think it works. I think some people. Are I don't better. think. I don't I think, think we. Some people are just probably. better. Whether it's genetics or it's bloody lifestyle, there's just differences in outcome. Personally, I think it's that some people had a bad rap, which means that they turned out behind the eight ball eightball sometimes. Yeah, but I just don't think we implement those like those structures properly. I think it's getting better, like as a as a whole, at least. Mm. Well, maybe it's just the people that I associate with, like you know, everyone's you know, what is it? A rising tide raises everyone's ship. Something like that. There's, there's a saying along those lines. Yeah, I think the hierarchy system is what brings it down because. People are trying to push other people down to get higher up. If everyone was equal and everyone was just trying to help each other. Yeah, but if, I don't think it's reality. I think you're living in a dream world. I don't think it's possible yeah, to organize Yeah, but I think it's people like you that are bringing us down. I just don't think it works out. Like, every practical example we have in history of them trying to do it has ended in failure. Yeah, because you've still got douchebags that are trying to fucking push other people down. Yeah. Because I think that's in human nature. No, well, I've, and, I've, if you, and if you try and pretend like that's not even part of our nature and don't even address it, then you, you're blindsided by it when people come up. Fundamentally, me and you agree that it'd be a better result if everyone was treated equally. Let's do it. Let's just start a movement. Okay. Well, we have. Yeah. Effectively, we Join have. Join our cult movement. But that's what it's I'm saying. You've only got control over your own life. Like, we run our business like that democracy thing you were talking about. Yeah, true. You know what I mean? I would, like, I'll, I'll do it because I think it's weird. But I'm also aware that there's human nature, hierarchical bullshit baggage that people have. Mm. Damn the man. But yeah, I'll, I'll give you another example. Like, so let's just strap out a little bit more. So let's not just say AFL because that, most people would happily become a professional sports star. True. Pretty, pretty good job. Yeah. Even even a shit AFL player is having a pretty good life. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Most people would most people would trade their life for a shit AFL player. So extrapolated across. So extrapolated across Australia. Let's just say everyone gets paid a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Regardless of what job you do. Yep. And there's no potential to earn any more money. So that's okay. the difference between that and universal basic income. Or is it, yeah. you know, you get, you get the bare minimum, look after you, but then if you want to, if you want to go paint trees, or if you want to be a surgeon, both of those things could earn up, earn you lots of money, both those things could potentially not earn you much money. You do what you're passionate about. But if you had, everyone in Australia got paid $100,000 regardless, yep. how many people do you think would be surgeons? Well, probably the same amount of people, like, I would imagine the same people that are Legit. surgeons. What? So, you're saying that voluntarily, so, you're saying every surgeon right now 
their passion is surgeon. Like, none of them want to be painters. None of them want to go and train jiu-jitsu all day. Like, no one, uh, no one wants to do anything else. They, they want to spend 60 hours a day doing, or more, sorry, 60 hours a week or more probably doing a fucking highly stressful, high impact job where they've got people's life and death in their hands. You think, Fuck you think the same percentage of people would do it? If there I, I, wasn't would, monetary I, I wouldn't have thought, I wouldn't have thought that there would be a, a large disparity. I think you'd have to see a larger disparity between like the people that want to be garbage truck drivers, but those high end things. I like, would rather be a garbage truck driver than a surgeon. Yeah, so would I. But I don't think my like if I went to a surgeon, I I wouldn't think he'd have the same mentality because he'd be he's got a different personality type to us men. That's what those that makes those people tick. I don't think I reckon if you spoke to most medical professionals, like look at nurses, man. They don't do it because, like, they don't do it because they make good money. They do it because they like. What job? Would, like, people. no. You speak to a nurse. Yeah. They make good money for their line of work. <laughs> Most nurses I speak to, like, what? How many nurses do you speak to? Do you go, what? Like, you could have gone and earned three hundred thousand dollars doing something different. No, because everyone's got a universal basic income of a hundred grand. No, you didn't. see now you just need just not sing it up. Okay. Nurses make good money. They make pretty good money. Yeah. And they're very, very nice people, compassionate people. Yeah. So they're not doing that because they want to make good money. They're doing it because that's in their personal. Well, it's everything's a, everything's a combination of choices. But if you suddenly made nurses get paid ten thousand dollars a year, I bet you most of those nurses wouldn't be doing it anymore. There's obviously a monetary component of their yeah, because choice. Because people need nurse. the money to live. But you're saying that oh, if people, if everyone could just have a universal basic income of a hundred yeah. grand a year, people wouldn't go and do those jobs. And I think they would. Yeah, but I think you're wrong, and I think every bit of uh, evidence from history s- supports that. What uh, every bit of is evidence from history? How communism's been tried many times, and it doesn't work very well. You've just changed the subject again. That's what communism is: is everyone's equal, everyone gets the same amount of pay, regardless of what job you get to do. That's communism, right? And it doesn't work very well. Because people don't want to be fucking surgeons, because they'd rather stay home and what, spend time with their people, kids. Why don't people want to be surgeons? Because why would you work 70 hours a week when you could work 30 hours a week? Because you wouldn't necessarily, like, this is what I'm saying, like, that if, if we haven't implemented it properly, perhaps, but I what don't... Do you mean implemented it properly? Why would you work 70 hours a week as a surgeon when you could work 30 hours a week as a fucking barista? Because you, because people, oh man... Because that is what people want to do. Some people, yeah. The vast majority of people would take the barista job. I don't think. I don't think that's right. If someone told me today, you can spend the rest of your life being yeah, a surgeon you, or man. a barista. Yeah, that's you. But you're saying that everyone. Like, let, you're okay, saying that everyone. Busy. Let's ask. Like, all right, we will. Louisa, ask some doctors. Oh, we'll ask some doctors and say, like, hey, if all doctors got paid, if everyone got paid a hundred grand a year, would you still be? a doctor? I guarantee you, they're going to be on my side with this. I don't think they will. Okay, we'll just ask. Okay, cool. I, just, I can't believe you think the vast majority of people would do. High stress. People would do what they're passionate about. And you think most surgeons are passionate about being surgeons? Yes, because why else would you fucking spend Because they pay lots of money and there's lots of prestige associated with it. There'd because still it's... be prestige associated with it. Why? There'd still be a fucking why hard job to do. Some, why would Michael Jordan stay back and like put himself through what he put himself through to oh. be the best at what he was doing? I, I really feel like you haven't thought this through. I feel like you're just looking at... So why don't you take a step back? Okay, let's ask this question one more time. Okay. You think that if everyone was paid the same yep. in Australia right now, every every single person that's working on the dole, regardless of what you're doing in Australia today, yep. if they were paid $100,000 a year, you think that pretty much everyone would be doing the same jobs that they're currently doing? Not that they're currently doing. What would they do? Whatever the fuck they wanted to do. So you're saying, but, you, but you just that's said that all think, this... That's what I think is the best thing about it. It's like, hey, you don't have to worry about fucking money anymore. Who's going to fix you... your fucking knee when you break it? There's someone that wants to be a surgeon. So then. everyone would be... So How many people... Do everyone you think, except for surgeons. How many people out there do you think that wanted to be surgeons that couldn't go and study, that couldn't afford to go and do it? Well, maybe they're fucking dumb, and... mate. No, maybe they're not. Like, that's such <laughs> a one-eyed argument. Oh, maybe they're dumb. And they're... All right, well, you let the fucking moron that fucking smoked cones at year 10 and didn't finish year 12 be your surgeon, and I'll get the fucking surgeon that got straight A's in year 12. Like, what are you talking about? They're... Not everyone can be a surgeon. No. It take... It takes a certain personality type. It takes a certain Oh, so all of a sudden now it takes dedication and a certain It does. So there will be some people out there 
that have the personality type of a surgeon. They will, and they won't be motivated to do it because there's no reason to bother. What do you mean? Well, of course they will. Because they've got the personality type to be a surgeon. They might have, there's heaps of things that you could do with that personality type. Yeah, of course. And one of those is be a surgeon. Yeah, and why would you? What's the point? Because that's what you want to fucking do. Oh my god, man. This, I can't believe you're saying this thing. I can't believe you're so one-eyed. I feel like you haven't looked into it. I I'm open to all kinds of things. I can guarantee you, if I had the magic powers to do this right now, I would, I would stake all my, I'm not going to stake my life on it, but I'd be fucking, I'd stake my house on it for sure, that there would be a huge disparity in the jobs people did. Because why would, I think you've got this weird, idealized version maybe so uh, maybe it was my fault for picking surgeon but i feel like you've got this weird idealized version of like surgeons are all people that are doing it because they wanted the betterment of mankind and help people no i think the majority of them would have that in their psyche that's a percentage of it yeah but why would they sacrifice their life do you think that all those people would sacrifice their life health and happiness for the greater good yes essentially why would they do that because everyone at like because that Everybody would be doing their bit. It doesn't work like that because of human psychology and human, human, human motivation. Like, it's just not how people work. People are selfish assholes. Well, we shouldn't be. Okay, I agree with you on that, but, but wishing, wishing away that everyone would be nice to each other doesn't solve the problem. But a universal basic income will. I don't say that would help the problem. I think that's an interesting idea. I'm not saying it's a magic bullet, bullet, but I, I, I find the ideas behind universal basic income to be interesting, especially with the rise of automation. Exactly. Yeah, can, uh, fuck, uh, hey, there you go. A robot will do your surgery. Maybe. Actually, I'd actually be happy with that. I'd be happy with that. But what's that got to do with it? Well, it fixes your surgeon conundrum. Well, it that... also fixes the garbage truck conundrum. Actually, let's all just have a basic minimum in- minimum income and like make music and. Paint. So what happens when? Okay, so what happens when it's fifty years right, in the well, future and all the AI is doing all the work, and then we realise that AI is sentient, sentient beings and essentially essentially we're slave owners. Cool. So we're just going to own the robot slaves. They're robots, man. Okay. It's a computer. So they're smarter than you, they have more capacity for emotional intelligence and and kindness. Oh, they'll wipe us out. We've spoken about this before. Yeah. They'll be like, ah, oh, you guys are fucking everything up and kill us all. Maybe. Maybe. Or they'll or they'll just realise the whole thing's fucked and turn off. Be like, ah, eh, fuck you guys, you're on your own. Or we'll just keep trundling along and fuck knows. It's what I like about you, man. I like having these conversations because you're a you're an like you you're an idealistic person. But I just, I feel like sometimes you go like 10% too far, and I feel like if you weren't, if you weren't so caught up in your own momentum, because I do the same thing on the other side. Yeah, I know. If I you weren't, so like, you're if you, 10% below. If you weren't, if you weren't so caught up in your own momentum, you just like took a breath and thought about it, you'd be like, oh, oh yeah, I might have taken that too far. Just checking the hog. Yeah. I just, um, I, I, I'm, just, I'm still caught up on this whole, this whole belief that you think people would just be surgeons. Let's move on, because it's probably boring to listen yeah, to. Yeah, no, well, I've got to go now anyway. So. But it's just, it amazes me. Yeah, well, you, uh, you're a cynical... I'm man. not, it's just human, human psychology. There's well, been, there's been lots of studies on it for years and years. The great philosophers have spoken about it. They all seem to come up to the same type of thing. What? Is that people are motivated by their own individual needs, and they won't sacrifice their own individual needs for the greater good. I think you and I look at different quotes. I'm not talking about quotes, I'm talking about science. I'm not talking about fucking Instagram photos. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, you were just saying that philosophers have come up with the same thing. Okay, so here's the fundamental question here. You're driving a car, and you've uh, got, there's a, there's only two tracks you can go down. Somehow you're on a train car. There's two <laughs> tracks you can go from. It's a something. question, I'm not asking you to answer it, it's just a question that, a ph- yeah. philosophical question people ask. You're, you're on a track that's You can just, run over one person in your family, or you can run over four people in a Yeah, family. and most people run over four people. That extrapolated is why you wouldn't have as many surgeons. Because <laughs> why would you sacrifice time? Oh, okay, I'm going to miss my kid's uh, recorder recital because I'm going to do surgery on old mate. Or I just won't rock up and I get paid the same. Why wouldn't I go to that? Well, you just, you literally yourself said you're not going back into this and you've gone straight back into it. Yeah. i got to go because I'm a busy man. Busy man. What are your closing thoughts? Power of power. What are your closing thoughts? 
D- and don't fucking bring up surgeons, because I... No, I was gonna, my, my, my final thought is that I wish more people were like you. I also wish less people were like you. No, no, I think <laughs> the, the world would be a much better place if people like you, there's more people like you, as long as, like, I was in charge. To be like, <laughs> no, that's stupid. <laughs> That's dumb. Oh my god. That's very nice. Insane. But that's dumb. Oh, you're an idiot.